It stands elegantly on West Avenue in Norwalk, Connecticut. A French-style chateau with a veranda, all turrets and gables, and pink and gray granite. It's the fantastic creation of a Victorian with a vision. Le Grand Lockwood had a real eye and ear and mind for the next best thing. He was like the Bill Gates of the 19th century. Le Grand Lockwood made his fortune investing in railroads and steamships and was treasurer of the New York Stock Exchange. So when it was time to build his country home, he wanted the most modern money could buy. Technology was at its highest point right here in this mansion. It wasn't repeated again until the turn of the century in the Gilded Age. High tech at the end of the Civil War meant gas lighting, central heating, air conditioning, hot and cold running water, and electric call buttons for the servants. Wires cleverly embedded in the floorboards connected all the doors and windows to a burglar alarm. Then, the height of extravagance, 40 sinks, six bathtubs, and seven full bathrooms. Virtually the rest of the country was still using outhouses. Even the servants had a modern bathroom. There's nothing full about anything in this building. It's not stenciled on or painted on. And it's just a unique building in that way. The mansion became so famous for its opulence that it was photographed for stereoptic and viewing, a populist 3D glimpse into the lifestyles of the rich and famous. It was family entertainment, and people bought them. They apparently loved to see how the other half lived. Lockwood, a patron of the arts, commissioned paintings and sculpture for the house. He had sculpture on the lawn, which the newspaper criticized because there was a classical, partially nude figure right out on West Avenue, and they thought perhaps she should be a little more modestly draped. The Lockwood family had only lived in the mansion one year when the stock market crashed on Black Friday, 1869. He must have been a really smart man. So how did he amass his fortune and then lose it? Bankrupt, but intent on paying his debts, the Honorable Mogul mortgaged the house, which ended up under the control of his rival, Cornelius Vanderbilt. He built up a very hostile relationship with Vanderbilt as a competitor. And Vanderbilt did not like competitors. And then Lockwood died suddenly of pneumonia in 1872. Mrs. Lockwood couldn't raise the money for the mortgage, and Vanderbilt foreclosed. The Lockwood era came to an end. It was several years before Charles Matthews, an importer from New York City, bought it for his large family. But he would not enjoy the mansion for long. He died within three years of moving in. That was a terrible blow to Mrs. Matthews, who closed up his room and never opened it again the whole time she survived. Charles's daughter, Florence, would be the mansion's longest inhabitant, living there for the next 60 years. When she was elderly, she used to pull herself up to her bedroom up the dumbwaiter. And she never modernized or altered this house. And that is the reason that this house is so unusual and so valuable, is that everything in here is still as it was, untouched. The city of Norwalk bought the estate after Florence died. At first, using it for office space and storage, and later, making plans to tear it down and put up a new city hall. But it was the 60s, and landmark preservation was coming into vogue. Activists sued to stop demolition. 
The Common Interest Group really saved the building, and a wonderful suffragette named Elsie Hill manned a desk every day, watching the people come in, having them sign the petition to save the building. Led by Cynthia Clark Brown, the Junior League of Stamford and Norwalk took up the mission to restore and conserve the mansion, designated a National Historic Landmark in 1971. We have a lot of lessons to learn from this house. It's part of the history of this country, of a person who had the foresight and the money to build it. Each phase of restoration revealing a new lesson to teach on creativity, construction, and commerce. So future generations can move forward by learning from the past. <laughs>